Okay, now that we're in the air, you know, because I can apparently fly a plane with no training whatsoever now, where are we going? Wow! I can't believe you fell for my trap! The fuck are you talking? Why are you taking off your shirt? OH GOD! That's right! It was really me, Bane, all along! Eh, I kind of thought that was a shitty impersonation in the first place. So, I guess you're gonna break my back or something like that? Don't be silly. I actually need your help. And what if I don't want to help you? Then I'll crash this plane! With those! Yeah, yeah, memes, I get the point. So, what is it you want me to do then? I want you to do a commentary with me. A commentary? Yeah. You're a criminal genius with superhuman strength, and you need my help to make a commentary. Pretty much, yeah. Alright, this should be easy enough. <laughs> For you. Did you just make a damn right I did? What are you gonna do about it, bitch? Well, Boone, would you like to explain the context for this particular commentary? <laughs> Gladly. Excellent. Oh, wait a moment. Why is there music playing? Boone, what are you doing right now? And how did you get a microphone? We had Tamashi Hiroka and Master TP10. Then from out of nowhere came plays the movie fan Doodle did a com already But don't call this peak a clone Cause Doodle missed some stuff That I really think you should know My avatar is Kung Fu Chicken Ready to give a dough ass kickin Impact it might be a little wicked and the commentary's ready to begin! So that's it. That's pretty much the basis of what's going on. So let's get started. Hey guys, what's up? This is Blaze the Movie Fan. And it's time for another commentary. This time I will be commenting on Master TP Times' latest commentary. Okay, I'm surprised nobody brought this up, but it really seems like he could just not get a complete take that he liked of him saying a single sentence. And it's made even more obvious by the fact that he's on camera. There's a visual indication for when he jumps to another take instead of just an audible one. And that makes it even harder to miss when he does do it. Granted, YouTube standards are probably a bit too high, but if you can't get through a single sentence without the need for multiple takes, maybe using an avatar or something is in order. Especially since the timing of some of these cuts leads me to believe that this whole video is either unscripted or poorly scripted and you're looking up information between points. Now let me assure you that I am not making this commentary because it happens to be on a commentary of someone I like. I mean, hell, I think Master TP Tan's commentaries on Tamashi's video on over in his Pokemon and Mega Evolutions are fucking awesome. Because those two videos were very bad videos by Tamashi. But my problem with this particular commentary is the fact that Tamashi's video on Pikachu clones isn't even a bad video. Well, yes, I suppose if commentaries weren't a way to provide criticism or dissenting educated opinion, you might have a point here. But a video doesn't have to be bad in order for one to be able to provide criticism or a dissenting opinion. TP even released a little PSA afterwards, saying that a lot of people seem to judge commentaries based on what the original video was. Wonder who that was directed towards? Batman? No, what? Bat Batman makes commentaries? Of course, but you probably know him as Dirtbag Redden. So, anyway, without further ado, let's begin. I seem to have an addiction to bad Pokemon countdowns, and I think I'll need to see a therapist someday. Yeah, your therapist just called and told me to tell you that your problem isn't obsession with bad Pokemon countdowns. 
Your problem is your obsession with fucking Tamashi. And your problem is your obsession with jump cuts. Seriously, how has no one pointed this out yet? I don't know, maybe you're just a dick? And in every generation of Pokemon games, Game Freak has tried to capitalize on this by introducing a Pikachu clone to try to sell the new games. When has a Pikachu clone ever been used to try and promote a new generation? Or at least enough to be considered an actual influence on why the generation got anywhere? Well, in the Pokemon anime, at least one of the protagonists has a Pikachu clone. With an exception of Plurcell and Minion. And the Pokemon anime is used to promote the games. That's probably what she meant. Except she outright said that they make these clones to try to sell the new games. Even if her intent was to say that they were always in the anime. By the way, where's Pichu in the actual series? But that's a whole different can of worms that I'll be opening later. Then they would need to have a prominent role in any anime in order to do that. Hell, by that logic, Bunnelby was more of a selling point for the game, since it was important to Clement's backstory. In other words, you completely ignored the second half of TP's statement for your own benefit while leaving it in the video. So how well does each Pikachu lookalike represent its game? Today we're going to rank all five of the Pikachu spawn and find out. But first, a little background on Pikachu. This is filler! That's all this part is. This adds nothing in regards to what comes later. Even if it's just fun trivia, it wouldn't be nearly as egregious if you connected this to something else in the video other than Hey you Pikachu! This is nitpicking, plain and simple. Not everybody is a fucking expert on Pokemon like you or Master TP10. You have to keep in mind that Hamashi gets thousands of views on her videos. And there is a high chance that someone who isn't too familiar with Pokemon can stumble across her videos. And how likely is it that a person would not already know about Pokemon since the title of the video directly relates to Pokemon? On top of that, the only fact that gets brought up is the fact that Pikachu wasn't originally going to be Ash's primary partner in the anime which is completely irrelevant to this video and only used to fill time so that Tamashi can get some more of those viewer retention dollars. Again, if it was actually related to what's presented elsewhere in the video, then it would be fine, but it's not. Actually, I stand corrected. There is one thing in here that's relevant later. The folks at Pokemon Focus Group for the mascot of the franchise and discovered that Pikachu had wider appeal than Clefairy, since boys like Pikachu since it was cool and powerful, and girls like Pikachu since it was cute, providing a more gender-neutral appeal. Wait, how is that relevant to anything? <laughs> You'll see. Her hair looks gay. I think she should just refer to them as Pika clones, since that's obviously the more correct term. Even though the point of her using the word mascot is that it's part of her criteria? Tell me, Mr. Movie Fan. When the part of the video that you have a problem with is a central part of the video, then how do you justify saying that it is good? The entire video is spent harping on how well they do or do not represent the mechanics of their generation. In fact... This could be our final thoughts, plain and simple. Right here, entire commentary nullified. You agree with the primary problem, crisis averted. Crashing this plane. <sighs> Fine. Also, why does Pachirisu fail as a Pika clone when it's objectively one of the better ones, as evidenced by the footage of it winning the world championship in 2014? Just because someone manages to use a bad Pokemon to beat a big tournament, doesn't mean it's not a bad Pokemon anymore. It just means that someone is able to use a bad Pokemon right. Okay, sure, if we were talking about, say, any old big tournament, but this is the World Championship. It's like going to the Magic World Championships with a dirtly squirrel deck. You're not gonna get anywhere. Good tools can be used poorly, don't get me wrong, and that results in bad performance. But a bad tool being used correctly is straight up not going to beat a good tool being used correctly. Oh, by the way, Pachirisu was used for its ability to disrupt the battle, including the move Follow Me, which is only available to a handful of Pokemon, 
and the Pika clone specific move, Nuzzle. Pachirisu happens to be the only Pokemon with access to both of these moves. Unless you somehow trade up a Pichu to Generation 6 from Generation 3 that you got from an event during Generation 3, and the move passed on by breeding since non-Gen 6 born Pokemon aren't legal in the World Championships. I haven't really bred with prior generation Pokemon that didn't have moves that couldn't be naturally learned by the Pokemon, so I don't really know. You're arbitrarily throwing it under the bus because it doesn't have a gimmick. Yes, she is, and she has a damn good reason too. I believe the term arbitrarily that you appear to be agreeing with already negates her having a damn good reason for anything. But hopefully you can start making some sense soon. And I'm sorry to say, but I actually agree with her. I also think that Pachirisu is the most forgettable Pikachu clone. Well, so much for that damn good reason. How exactly is a Pokemon that won a world championship forgettable again? With a combination of moves that a competitive player would want that is available nowhere else? Care, care to run that by me again? I guess if you really want to stretch it, Emolga's name in Japanese is Emanga, and Emon translates into garment or drape, which is a reference to the flaps on its arms, but it could also possibly reference the costumes your Pokemon get to wear in musicals, which are one of the worst parts of Generation 5. Still something Gen 5 had, thus having something to follow your bullshit criteria. Except she never said it absolutely is something that Imolka represents. She said that it's one of the possibilities. And does she ever discuss any other possibilities? Well, she must think that this is the correct answer then. I think probably the biggest core mechanic it brought to the table though was Pokemon gender and breeding. So it's fitting that the mascot of this generation is only obtainable through breeding. Though I'm not much a fan of baby Pokemon, they were a clever way to introduce players to the new mechanic. Excuse me, introduce? I'm sorry, but I don't care right now if you find Togepi or Togetic disappointing. If any Pokemon introduced the concept to players, it'd be the first egg you got. That's not Pichu, that's Togepi. Except in the games, Pokemon Gold and Silver, you are giving the Togepi directly as an egg. So the only thing that you actually learn about breeding is the fact that you have to walk a lot of fucking steps in order for an egg to hatch. Which introduces the concept of Pokemon breeding even being possible. On top of that, since you say that the anime is used to promote the game, guess what the first Pokemon to hatch from an egg in the anime was? You guessed it, Togepi. In fact, it was the first second generation Pokemon to even appear in the series. Unless you count the Donphin cameo from the first movie. Do you? Nope, because it still debuted before Donphin even then. You could technically say that Ho-Oh debuted before then in the first episode, but be honest, how many people didn't think that was a Fira when they first saw that episode? Also, I remember back when Generation 2 was the current generation. And I can tell you that back then, Pichu was the most popular baby Pokemon. I mean, hell, it was more popular than Togepi. Well, of course it was the most popular one. It was just a smaller version of Pikachu. And this is not a popularity contest anyway. It's about what Pokemon introduced the mechanic to people. Considering the fact that Togepi also looks like a hatched baby to begin with, I'd say that Togepi represents the mechanic more so than Pichu. Not that it matters, since this entire argument is stupid. And the number one Pikachu clones are... Plessel and Minin. Your number one are two Pokemon, for a grand total of six Pikachu clones on the list. Take out Pichu and not include Meryl, and you have a top five. And if anyone tries to argue that Tamashii's praises for Plessel and Minin could be exactly the same and doing two separate segments would be redundant, I point to her top ten worst gym leaders, where she did one segment covering multiple gym leaders not once, but twice on that list. But there is a huge difference between that video and the video that you're commenting on. You see those gym leaders on the other list? He have almost nothing in common, so it makes sense to have them as separate entries. But that also means that those gym leaders should have gotten their own segments. I mean, the simple solution is just to indicate that numbers 1 and 2 are tied. In fact, that was the exact reason for putting those segments together in the gym leader list, so why wouldn't it work here? Especially here, where you do have two entries that get the exact same praise. 
Generation 3 was a big turning point for the series. We were leaving 8-bit behind, and all that went with it, so we had to really start over with a new world and lots of new features to introduce to people. Aside from moving up to 32-bit, double battles were the big selling point of Ruby and Sapphire, so of course they required two mascots that each knew a double battle specific move and had abilities, another new feature, to help them work together. With Helping Hand and their plus and minus abilities, Plusle and Minin tie everything about Ruby and Sapphire together in one cute package to sell to people. I'm sorry, but if Plusle and Minin are there to tie up Gen 3 in one package, then Gen 3 must suck. Yes, they are there to promote the concept of double battles, but Gen 3 also had plenty of other duels that could do the concept, and better. For instance, Volby and Illumise, Latios and Latias, Soul Rock and Lunatone. She never said that... Plusle and Minion are great Pokemon to use in double battles. Okay, this is where I'm bringing back that point into Mashi's History of Pikachu segment. Remember that? How Pikachu was chosen because it appealed to both boys and girls? And that the reason it appealed to boys was because it was cool and powerful? That's right, Tamashi's own explanation for Pikachu's success is precisely why Plusle and Minion fail as representatives of the new type of battle. Because they suck at it, and they suck worse without it. The point she was trying to make is the fact that Plushland and Minion were very popular back in the day. Even the colors, Ruby and Sapphire. Unfortunately for a lot of people, it was just too different. With the bright palettes that could support a lot of different colors and the new gimmicks, so these mascots weren't very popular with a lot of people. Well, I think that clip speaks for itself. And you needed my help with this commentary, why exactly? Do I look like someone who knows Pokemon? Eh, you look like more of a Monster Rancher guy. For you. Oh, there's far more than just that. Nothing about how they're literally just Pikachu, but with red and blue instead of black? How about the fact that without double battles, they absolutely suck? Their abilities only work when the other's on the field, and without the other, they are weak and they can't do anything. At least the other duels don't need the other member to work in doubles. And that's even implying they'd actually work, since Plusle and Minim are very susceptible to a very powerful and very common double battle move, Earthquake. Look, Master Tibetan, I know that you are very passionate about Pokemon competitive battling, but there is a time and place to talk about stuff like that. But Earthquake is an incredibly common move in double battles because it hits both opponents. And on top of that, it's also a move that a ton of Pokemon, competitive or not, have access to. And uh, by the way, Pachirisu has the same base stats as Plus of Mana, and then you called it a bad Pokemon when it has a better move pool and abilities that matter. But I do still admire how committed to their concept they were. Game Freak really believed in the game they were making, and celebrated those games full out when designing Plusle and Minin. So to me, they're the epitome of Pokemon mascots. Even if we just considered Plusle and Minin the best Pika clones, that's all they'd be. Pika clones. Again, she never said they were great Pokemon competitively, thus making your point irrelevant. Even though he said this directly after calling them mascots. Thus echoing a point you agreed with earlier. I think we can end things here. Good. I get to give my final thoughts. Blaze, the fact that you stated the TP felt the need to find a way to prove Tomashu wrong comes off as incredibly ironic, considering that's exactly what you do with TP's video. Yes, TP tends to focus a bit too much on competitive battling sometimes, but when Tamashi's list is based on a criteria that you bring up as a bad thing, then obviously he's doing something right. I mean, wouldn't promoting double battles be so much easier if you had a pair of Pokemon that were actually good in the format? How can something you have no access to until the second half of the game introduce a mechanic better than the first time you see the mechanic in action? That's just it. Not only is Tamashi overanalyzing these things, using the notion that they're supposed to be mascots, but her own logic fails her when you look as deep as she's pretending to look. Hell, I didn't even think the original video was terrible either for what it was, but it was very flawed, and that's what TP brought to the table. So my advice to you is this. Before you commentate on someone for having what you see as a vendetta, make sure you're not the one who has the vendetta instead. What about you, Bane? You got anything to add? 
Screw it, I'm crashing this plane! I didn't say there'd be no survivors this time! <laughs>